I hate the sound of my voice. I can hear you muttering to yourself right now. Yeah, well, I do too. But what if I let you in on a little secret? The sound of your voice plays such a small part in the impression you make on others and your ability to be a great leader. Your voice is only authentic and powerful when in perfect alignment with your mind and body. And only then will you be truly heard, able to diffuse conflict and able to make an impact and great impression on others. Welcome to the Property Management Podcast with That Property Mum. I'm your host, Kylie Walker. I'm a former television sports journalist and mother of four turned co-owner of a million dollar real estate brand. Each week I teach women in the property management industry all the best tips to help you balance your career and family, grow your dream business, master your fear, boost your confidence and conquer your mindset. Ready to get started? Let's dive in. Hey there, and welcome to the Property Management Podcast. I'm your host, Kylie Walker, aka That Property Mum. Whoa, the year is literally flying at the time of this recording, and we are heading on the slippery slope to Christmas. If you're feeling a little stressed or overwhelmed, and you haven't quite hit the goals you set for yourself, I want to let you know that you're not alone, and that is totally okay. But if leadership, growing your confidence, becoming a better public speaker or making a great first impression are still high on your list of things to get around to do this year, then you, my friend, need to hear this episode. I can speak from personal experience about my amazing guest today. Marie Clancy is the founder of Say It Now, a voice consultancy business. She provides life-changing public speaking and communication training designed to ensure powerful first impressions with formidable impact. I sought her out after I received a few public speaking requests. But first, let me take you back to the late 90s. I had an epic fail at a public speaking event I was hosting in my job as a sports journalist at the time. I couldn't get the name right for this family and they won nearly every award on the night. I was so embarrassed and ashamed, and by the time I came off stage, my stunning red power suit had sweat stains down to my waist. I had this lovely old lady come up to me at the bar at the end of the night, and she patted me on the shoulder, and she said, you looked lovely at the start. I was so mortified, and I vowed there and then I would never step on stage again. And I didn't for 21 years until I did. And boy, oh boy, did my imposter syndrome wreak havoc. You can't do this. The last time you did this, you made a fool of yourself. No one wants to hear what you've got to say. And so I nearly pulled the pin on my speaking event until I was introduced to Marie. What I learnt was the actual sound of your voice is such a small part in a way bigger picture that being a great public speaker or simply being able to make a great first impression on someone required a holistic approach that went way deeper than just fixing your posture, breathing a little deeper and addressing your nerves. It does require all that, but there's so much more to it. So let's dive in and take a listen to my conversation with Marie. Marie, thank you so much for joining me on the Property Management Podcast. Before we dive in, can you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and how you got started as a voice consultant? Okay. Thanks for inviting me too, Kylie, first up. Look, I started working with children, teaching them speech and communication. And sometimes their parents would come to me and say, listen, can you help me out with a presentation I've got for work? And that sort of opened up a a little bit of an avenue with adults, but I had no intention of working with adults back then. This is talking about 30 years ago. Then uh, one of the parents was a politician and he got me into coaching a couple of politicians and I worked there and I thought I, I could see that there was quite an opening in the workplace for adults in this area, but I just wasn't in the position. It didn't suit my life at that point in time to venture. And then about 10 years on, uh, my whole life pretty much turned upside down 
pretty close to overnight and it was quite clear to me that I had to support my family. Uh, and then I thought, hang about, there's a real opening here and it's something I was interested in. It was just more I wasn't in the position to do it. I think I'm in the position to do this now. And so back in 2003, I uh, registered Say It Now and I started doing mainly voice and communication one-on-one -on -one coaching. And then that led to uh, there was the Institute of Public Administration. They said, will you design some communication courses for us and public speaking, which I did. And they were well received because of the voice component. A lot of people don't really understand a lot of the fundamentals of voice training and how important our voice is in communication. And pretty much the rest is history. I think that's a really great place to start with those foundations of voice. Um, now, I've worked with you and I think what you do is absolutely amazing, but it's not just our voice and how we sound when we speak that, that you focus on, which I was really surprised at. Um, it's more of a holistic approach. I mean, there's the breath work, the brain work, the confidence work. So maybe let's go back to the basics of how it all ties together. Well, in a nutshell, Kylie, and I probably would have said this to you at the very start, our mind, body and voice are inextricably linked. So what's in our mindset plays out in our body language and ultimately our voice is the outcome. So when I work with people, I can give them all the tricks of the trade of this is how you present this and this is how you structure your presentation, what have you. But if I do not address what's sabotaging their mindset, I'm only just putting Band-Aids over it. So whilst I'm not a psychologist, we do explore what, what's behind those nerves. Okay, we all get them and these are certain things and tips you can do to control. But if you don't really know what is in that mindset, what are you really feeling more than even thinking? And where has that come from your story previously in your life? And once I find that people can connect just the emotion sides because I can't go down the psychology track, I, I have to refer them to a psychologist if, if they need that. But so often they've usually been to the psychologist by the time they get to the voice coach they will think, oh, my gosh, I never thought to think that what happened to me in grade three, <laughs> but that's a feeling I get when I have to present. And once they sort of connect the emotional side of it, then you can see there's a bit of a break and a release. And then we go into a lot of the voice work to calm them, to get that lovely presence of mind so that then if they're fully present then and they've got that lovely connection of mind, body and voice, they've got that lovely congruency, they're connected, they're fully present, then they can connect and influence others. And that's what charismatic people can do or do do. And that's really important, I think, in the workplace as well. And especially a lot of my audience are in the property management industry, either uh, as they have it as their career or their business owners. And there's a lot of dealing with clients and people on a day-to-day -day basis. So that communication is key. So maybe, so say if we're going to go for a job interview or we're speaking with a new client, what are some of the best tips that you can give us so that we can make that great first impression? Right, is a self-check-in. Like, where are you at? This, Where's my mind at at this point in time? Because at the end of the day, we've all got our lives to live and other impacts in our personal life or whatever's happening in the business life, what have you, when you go to meet someone, do a check-in of where's my mindset at the moment? Where, I, where I, am I emotionally? Because that's going to play out in my body language. And so you do have to almost play elements of mind games of, okay, this is going on. I'm not happy with this happening in my life, but, hey, I've got to switch in and I've got to become still your authentic self, but just be fully present and focused. And a lot of the breathing, that deep breathing, that intercostal diaphragmatic breathing is the absolute key to accessing that authentic vibration within our body. And that will help clear the mind and help really keep us fully connected and congruent when we converse with someone. And people don't know that you're being congruent. They just know that whether they'll trust you or whether they connect with you. But if you are fully connected yourself, you've got the best possible chance to, to connect with someone else. And so that's a big thing is that lovely connection because within the first three to seven seconds of an encounter, we're, we've been judged. And that judgment goes in two different um, categories. They've got uh, two different dimensions, really, with the judgments. There's the warmth factor and the competence. 
So the warmth factor is, is this person, what's, what's, their, is, what's their intention? Is their intention a friendly intention? Is intention to help me? Or have they got another agenda? And either way, whatever we judge with that, then we go into the competence level of actually they are very friendly, but I'm not really convinced that they're able to uh, deliver what they, they say they can deliver or what I need them to, to deliver. And there's a lady by the name of Amy Cuddy. Uh, she's a social psychologist and she does at, at Harvard Business School. And she actually studies this warmth and competence. And she said basically that we rely on that to up to about 80% of when we're making a judgment of someone. So if we are fully connected, we will come across with that warmth and confidence. Does that also translate into video presentations? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, with video too, you've got, there, there's technical, you've got to do your gesturing and what have you within the screen. There's a whole lot of eye contact, that whole kind of thing. But basically our voice is really important in the video as well as our body and our, and our body language. So if we're second guessing ourselves and we've got that, self you know that um, imposter syndrome and we're second guessing and what have you that'll come out in our body language and people will definitely pick that up on a video more so face to face but definitely on a video as well I think you highlighted the imposter syndrome that I had I definitely have imposter syndrome when I was working with you leading up to doing a presentation. So I uh, have have done a lot of work on that um, little friend of mine, the imposter <laughs> syndrome. Um, but a, another concept of yours that I find really fascinating is the concept of our voices being our audible fingerprints. Can you explain that a little bit for us? Yes, certainly. No two voices are identical. So it's just, it's like our fingerprint. No fingerprints are, are identical. So basically, I think to myself, when I first found that out many years ago, I thought that's what we should be working on. That is our point of difference, our authenticity. If we want to be really authentic, we need to access our authentic voice, our authentic sound, our authentic vibration. So when a baby's born and they do that first yell, that scream, that what have you, that is accessing, that's their original authentic vibration, their voice, their sound. Then life goes that usually you'll see them sleeping in the cot and they do that lovely what we call belly breathing, which is that intercostal diaphragmatic breathing. So they do the perfect breathing. And up to when they get around two, that's when, you know, you know how they get the ter- terrible two tantrums, their little personalities are coming into play. They're sort of looking at where they are in the family dynamic or the environment around them. And that's when they start to react a little bit more. And so when we react, depending on our story, we will, even our personalities, doesn't mean that we've faced any trauma or what have you, our body starts to react and part of it starts to lock up. And you'll often find we establish more of a higher breath and we are moving away from our authentic vibration, our authentic sound. That is so amazing. It's amazing how it all ties in. It's mind-blowing for me. So our industry in property management is very much based on being good at communication. And if you're not good at communication, you have lots of conflict and disputes. So I guess, you know, what are some of the common mistakes we all make with our communication? And whether that's on a large public speaking stage or a a smaller platform leading a team or even just uh, talking to your clients or, uh, you know, in in an office? I, I think one of the main ones that comes out to me when, myself included, and with clients is our inability to actively listen. So we have to fully listen. When I say actively listen, we have to be, that's, we go back to that presence of mind again. We need our mind to be clear and give someone our undivided attention. And don't listen to, for, to rebuttal or to speak, just listen to what that person's saying. And that's why I think you would have known too when I was with you, when I was coaching you, I'd take down notes and I would let you speak. So I'm looking at your fluency of speech, I'm listening for different elements in the voice to tell me if that's a little bit emotional or if that's not too emotional, what have you. And I don't say a word. I listen to what you say and then I'll flag certain things and then come back on, oh, Kylie, you spoke about such and such. That was interesting. And then you'll elaborate. And clients will say things like, how did you know to ask me that question? 
And I think I didn't. Your voice told me that. Your body told me that. So, But I have to be fully present and listen and observe. And it, you're not going to get it overnight. You just have to practice all the time. And even I say to clients, even if they're going to the shop or to the butcher or what have you, ask an open-ended question to someone, get them to speak back and observe. Start developing your skills of fully listening, actively taking in all the information and observation of their body language, their voice. And in time, you'll start to get a feel, a better feel and understanding of people. And that is such a bonus when you're communicating. People feel you're very interested. There's the, uh, is it Maya Angelou says, uh, her famous quote of, um, people will forget what you said, they'll forget what you did, but they'll never forget the way you made them feel. And that's what charisma is about. It's about when someone is in your presence, they're feeling fully heard and they're feeling fully, fully listened to. It's like a superpower, isn't it? Huge. Absolutely, Kylie. And something we all have to work in because you think of we're so disconnected, a lot of in IT and what have you, our phones, where there's so much disconnection in the world, there's so many distractions that we really have to come back to reconnecting. And even if you have to do it a few times a day, I'll say to clients, just do little breath check-ins, put an alarm in your phone and let it go off. And, oh, breath check-in, where's my breath right now? Oh, it's up high. Oh, it's middle. Okay, just bring it down low. And just do, seriously, two minutes of just bringing it down. You just feel a different person. And nobody is too busy to spare two minutes to do breath work. And to be honest, I do it all the time. Thanks to the techniques that you taught me. Yeah. I am constantly checking in. Before I jumped on this with you, I did a bit of bit of breath work um, because obviously, you know, I wanted you to I wanted to impress you a little bit with how far oh. I've come on my journey. Um but yeah, it, it breath work is is definitely um key to it. And I was definitely one of those high breathers, um, had everything held in my chest constantly running out of breath and, you know, getting a little bit high pitched and frantic at the end of every time I spoke. And I think that stuff that you just talked about then, that understanding other people is so valuable in property management because it is a high conflict, um, high dispute Mm. sort of energy. Uh, And and maybe um, if you could share I don't know if you've got it like a little a secret or a tip when you are in that conflict, how to quickly diffuse it using your body language or your voice to sort of, you know, get everybody's emotions back in check. Okay. Yes. Often when people are really upset or distressed, their pace will go quite fast. Their pace of speech is fast and their pitch tends to go, the register or pitch tends to go up a little bit higher. Listen to them, listen to them for, uh, and let them feel that they're being heard, and then when an opportunity comes, when you speak, keep your pace slower and more in control and keep your register down lower. Well, I mean, you don't have to be sounding like this, but just you don't sort of sound like this either because when we're like this, we sound really emotional and it just makes basically what we do is we elevate their emotional level. So if you just you just be calm but not too calm because it will sound condescending. So even tape yourself and practice a response with just role play with someone and muck around with it and just practice the actual, uh, the, the different levels of your pitch range and your register when you're responding to something and just see if you can hear the difference. But even experiment with other people, with your kids, experiment when they're a little bit upset with something, just experiment by slowing your pace down a little bit more. Don't match their pace and don't match their pitch level. Just go down lower in pitch and register and pace would be an experiment with it. That's great advice. I actually was in a conversation with a lady yesterday and it was getting a little bit heated and she, her pace and my pace is now going to pick up because I'm reliving the emotion of that conversation. And her pa- and, I, and I found myself internally like, you know, sort of panicking almost like and yes. I had to kind of mentally talk myself back down, you know, just relax. It's, you know, don't take on this emotion that, you know, this is her, this is her conversation, this is her feelings, not yours, you know. Um, mm-hmm. that, sort of, that empathy um, was kind of crossing energy lines or something, I don't know. But it was really interesting that you just mentioned that because I actually had that experience, exact experience yesterday. Now, uh, one of the key, other key topics that you teach is around 
uh, emotional intelligence in leadership. And this is a topic that I personally have had to do a lot of work on. So can you talk to us about how we can improve our emotional intelligence to be a better leader? Right. But first of all, it's a little bit like we have to be fully present and connected ourselves before we can connect to someone else. We have to be aware of our own emotions and how they impact others. And until we have that awareness, we are not, we're in a far less powerful position to be able to influence and help people with their emotions and manage their emotions. So we have to look at ourselves like how are we actually showing up? Now, you just basically had a, quite a lot of awareness with that lady yesterday. So you could feel that, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm picking up on her negative energy. So for you to slow down and collect yourself, you would have had to breathe deeper, take a breath, listen, hang back a bit, and then I bet you anything your pace would have slowed down when you did that. So you're th that you were then aware of, oh, hang about, I'm starting to get really quite worked up here myself. But because of your awareness, you were able to breathe deep, control, and bring yourself back to a more manageable level, even though I bet you she wouldn't. But did she eventually calm down a little bit when you did that? I think she did, yes. It's really funny. It's almost like it's contagious. And if, until we fully understand our own emotions and how we're showing up, really we're in we're in the back seat but but we're not in the box seat at all we need to be able to just be understand we can do that from home just even uh, understand how our emotions are playing out at home with the kids we're thinking it's, i don't know when they're teenagers yours are teenagers aren't they they are and that <laughs> is a challenge it is, but, you know, I sort of think to myself, I play mind games. If I have to go into a meeting and I know that this person has blown up in the previous meeting or they've just, I just, even if they, their behaviour is really, really, it's poor, it's poor behaviour, but we have to meet up, I just think to myself, I'm not going to take on your energy. And so I do that mind, you know, mind, body, voice. My mindset is I just even make up in my mind, this person has had something terrible happen. I'll create something in my mind that's terrible for me. Someone else might find something else terrible. And then I think, oh, and I just make it up in my mind because they say that the human brain can't tell the difference between fact and fiction. And I thought that was the biggest crock when I first heard that. But for it, we can't in the sense of, I don't know, have you ever watched a movie and you're it's really action-packed, the suspense is building up, you're like, quick, get out of the room, quick. You get all worked up, your heart's racing. And even though we know we're looking at a movie with actors, we know there's a film crew filming that, we actually almost our mind gets tricked and we start to get the emotional into a response of what's really happening. Well, we can do that and have that work for us by imagining that someone has had something, whatever it is that we need to think that creates an empathy for us. When we go into that communication process, we are going to come from a far more empathetic angle. And those kind of people who are very aggressive aren't used to people being empathetic towards them. They're used to that full-on pushback. That's a great little mindset hack there. I, I love that. And I think you've probably answered the next question, which is I'm, I'm a big fan of personal development, uh, which is why I seek out coaches like yourself to help me learn, grow and improve. So apart from all the other amazing tips you've given us throughout this podcast, um, do you have a, a, a top tool, a resource, a book, a podcast um, or even a a breathing exercise that our listeners could do straight after listening to this um, okay. episode? I think what they could do, three things. First of all, a posture and relaxation exercise, something to align the body and open it up. Then if they Google intercostal diaphragmatic breathing, they can see a video or you can even share that your video if you wanted to, that one I, I gave you for when we were coaching. They can they can have a look at that breathing. If they that, that they're not going to be able to achieve that overnight. There's no two ways about it. We have to practice, but we've got to practice it uh, laying down first because that's the best position you can have to access the depth. Then build the capacity of breath because as soon as we stand up, the breath naturally tends to rise. But that's okay because your brain knows how to get it down low. And then you can do little check-ins with keeping your breath down low. Do a couple of check-ins a day. 
And that will put you in a lovely frame of mind to practice those listening skills. That's what I would probably say, those, those three. So posture relaxation, depth of breath, and that listening to connect. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Finally, how can our audience connect with you? What's the best place for them to reach out to you? Oh, probably via my website, Carly. Say it now, voice consultancy. Yeah. Sayitnow.com.au. That's pretty bad that I said voice consultancy. It's sayitnow.com.au. Yes. That's all good. I will share links in the show notes anyway and to your breathing technique video as well. Thank you so much, Marie, for joining me on this episode. I am so very grateful for our conversation and the work you have done with me too. I can't wait to book in and do some more with you. Oh, thank you for asking me, Carly, and I'm looking forward to working with you again too. If you love the Property Management Podcast, you've got to check out the PM Collective, hosted by my friend, Ashley Goodchild. She discusses things like how to have awkward conversations about pay rises, um, yes, please, how to raise the bar in property management, and why so many people just seem to fall into the industry. You've got to love stories like that. She'll leave you with great advice, actionable steps to take, and let you know that you're not alone in any of the challenges that you face. So be sure to check out the PM Collective wherever you get your podcasts. Hey there, I know your time is valuable, so thank you for spending it here. Now, if you are someone who is serious about growing your property management business and you'd like to learn the systems that I've put in place inside my own business that consistently brings in five to 15 new management leads every single week without me having to do anything, then go to the show notes and click on the link to get on the waiting list for the growth school and you'll get notified when it launches. Until next time, my friend.